Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hoag, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hoag, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program today. Become a member and you speak English fluently. You speak English confidently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English effortlessly. When you join and commit, you commit to my VIP program. Go to the website effortlessenglishclub.com. Sign up, join, commit today. Just a question and answer today. Probably be a little bit of a short, shorter show. I'm planning to do a shorter show today. Just a relaxed chat. And uh, I don't know, 30 minutes, something like that. <laughs> Let's keep it short. Because tomorrow uh, our challenge starts, right? So hopefully you took your before photo, your beginning photo. Those of you who are doing the challenge. And you'll be joining me to lose weight. Now I'm going to set up the challenge runner website. I'll do that tomorrow, probably tomorrow morning, my time. And then uh, when the challenge officially starts tomorrow, I'll give you the information about that and how you can enter in your numbers for losing weight. So looking forward to it. Looking forward to getting started myself. I've got a little bit of weight to lose. And I wouldn't mind getting some strength back again. Just time to start trying to get a little more fit. I've had a year of dealing with babies and bad sleep, and I feel like it's time for me to make make a change. And hopefully, you too. All right, so I'll just get into any uh, you know questions and comments today. And anyway, there you go. So if you got questions or comments and you're watching live, please ask. Someone said they asked me a question on Twitter, and I didn't answer. That's because I do not uh, read my Twitter. My Twitter is basically uh, inactive, not active. You've got to follow me on gab, gab.com slash AJ Hoag, A-J-H-O-G-E on gab. That's my only social media. Alex, I want to know the difference, uh, the meaning of radical and radically. Uh, in, in kind of a very general way, it means kind of extremely, extreme or extremely, right? Not moderate, not moderate. Now, it actually has some other meanings, but that's the way you'll typically see it used in news stories, usually when they're lying about some group. <laughs> it's one of those words they use to lie, to make one group seem bad and then another group seem not bad like they they'll if they talk about antifa they'll never use the word radical 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 because it's uh they, instead they try to make these you know antifa are terrorists and communists but they try the media loves them and, and is trying is you know working with them so they'll try to make them just sound oh so peaceful and then uh, another piece a group that actually is peaceful that are just patriotic or they're normal people they'll describe them as radical Right. You'll hear this all the time. You'll see it all the time in the news. It's one of those words that they use for lying quite commonly. OK. Um, hope sleeping. Yes, yeah, sleeping's a little better lately. A little better. Thank you, Vladislav. Oh, Sarah started the challenge today. Nice. Very good. Um, oh, about the weight loss. Let's here's what I recommend to be consistent. Right. With your numbers. So hopefully you have a scale, you know, you have, so you can weigh yourself. And I recommend that you always weigh yourself at the same time every day, because then you'll get uh, kind of a consist. You can compare day to day, because uh, you'll notice if you you can try this if you want, weigh yourself, you know, in the morning when you first wake up, and then at lunchtime, and then in the afternoon, and then at night, and then before bed. You'll notice that the, the number can change. It can actually change a decent amount. <laughs> you might, might even like a whole kilogram might go up and down, up and down. Now, that's water weight, right? That's, uh, that's the fluids in your body 
going up and down and changing. And so I recommend for this challenge, so you kind of have a clear idea, are you really losing weight or not, is to always weigh yourself in the morning. When, so first in, first in the morning, like you first wake up, you get up, walk over and weigh yourself. You might You can go to the bathroom first if you want to or not, but just be consistent. Always do it the same way every morning. And that way you're always comparing your morning weight each time and this will give you a more clear idea like, okay, is your, are you losing or gaining weight? Marnie says, what's your opinion about learning linguistics, semantics, etc. for learning English? Uh, is it useful? No, not really. I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting subject for people who are interested in languages, but for actually learning to understand and speak, it's not necessary at all. Not really, it actually won't even really help you. Paulika says, do you plan to interview Steve Kaufman more in the future? Yeah, that's a good idea. When I, you know, I, the reason I'm not, do, uh, I haven't done any interviews lately, I ha I've stopped doing interviews, and it's just my sleep, <laughs> because uh, the time zone, like I'm usually interviewing people in North America, and uh, it, so it's always like I've got to do it at some terrible time for me. Usually, me forces me to wake up kind of early, and uh, you know, if my life was normal, I could it'd be no problem one day that, with a little less sleep. But because I'm already constantly, you know, tired from not enough sleep, uh, I really don't want to do that right now. So I, I'm not you know, avoiding interviews forever. It's just I'm taking a little break from doing interviews. I guess the, the and that's why the only interview I've done is, is my friend Kenny. He's over here in Asia, right? So I can just interview him at this time right now when I do the show because this right now is kind of the best time for me to do this. Um, so that's the, only, that's the thing. I would interview people in Asia, I guess. But uh, in other parts of the world, it's just not convenient for me right now with the sleep issue. But, you know, I'm hoping in a few more months as the babies get older, hopefully they, they start sleeping a bit longer, a bit longer, and therefore I can sleep longer. And uh, then I can get back to doing Because I want to do interviews again. I want to invite Archaya back on the uh, show, of course. I've got, I want to interview some people about health and fitness and fasting and all these kind of topics for our challenge. I'd love to have Steve Kaufman back, all these kind of things. Well, so we'll see. Hi, Jay. Is Trump going to win big? Ask Bidola Magsum. I think so. You know, I'm not an expert on all this stuff, but I think he's going to win big. I think a lot of people are very, very, very angry about what's happening right now. Uh, you won't see it in the news because the news just is lying. The news is part of this uh, uh, attempt at a color revolution, uh, at a kind of a Marxist revolution in America. The media is part of it. Um, so media is the enemy of the people by f for sure. So you can't trust anything you, s you see there. You can't trust the polls. You know, they do these popularity polls that oh, Biden's more popular than President Trump. Absolutely ridiculous. Definitely not. And, you know, if any of you are, have paid attention, they did this four years ago. You know, supposedly Hillary Clinton was like 10 points ahead of Trump, right? 10 percentage points ahead. And sh she was going to destroy him in the election and she lost. <laughs> so don't trust any of those numbers. Yes, I believe that what's happening right now, even though you're not seeing it, you know, in the news, it seems they're telling you one story. But I think what's actually happening right now is a lot of people, a lot of regular people like me, are getting really, really, really angry about the rioting and the violence and the lies and the, the fake virus and uh, all of this stuff. And people are going to, I think Trump's going to destroy uh, whoever. It's probably, it might not even be Biden. I don't, I'm not sure it will actually be Biden, but that's my guess. But we will have to wait and see, won't we? Lose weight with running or any way you well any way you, you can any way you want to running's a good activity but run slowly if you're doing it for weight loss um, I guess you're talking about long distance running kind of do the slow burn read that slow burn book by Stu Stu Middleman there are other ways you can do sprints and things but they're more intense.
Okay. Why do you hear name Silicon Valley companies communists? They're corp as Daria because they're corp they're Marxists. They're they're far left wing uh, communists. They're now they're joint they're censoring anybody who is uh, not a communist. <laughs> they are they're the enemy of the people by far. They're horrible, horrible, terrible, bad people. Really, truly evil. Yeah, Silicon Valley needs to be destroyed. Hopefully they'll be broken up and destroyed in the next few years. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. Let's see. How many of these? Okay, let's see. Uh, sorry, but the, the comments are jumping around here on my screen. One second. Uh, da, 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 I just lost a bunch of... You guys are typing a lot. Okay, here we go. Um, Katri says, Can anyone learn English without studying grammar? I mean, no study. Reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah, of course. I, uh, I mean, all babies do who grow up in an English-speaking country. So obviously, yes. And the key word there is studying grammar, analyzing it. Of course, you do learn it, but you can learn it in, in many different natural ways. So is it possible? Yes. Uh -huh. Good morning from San Juan. Uh, Argentina, I guess, says Susana. Nice. Good morning to you. Okay, uh, I'm going to just have to jump down and go backwards. But like it says, uh, okay, talking about the English of the two of Hillary and Trump. I watched, Pelika says, I watched the political debate with Hillary and Trump. I like the way Donald speaks. He has a clear American accent, easy to understand. What do you think? Yes, he's a very good speaker. Very, 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 very good. Um, WikiLeaks Lily Trump girl says WikiLeaks can't be trusted left-leaning propaganda absolutely WikiLeaks is all garbage it's all garbage it's social justice warriors it's uh, leftists you know Marxist types who are editing those pages don't trust anything on WikiLeaks it, it's all lies okay Angeli, An Angelo Lampignano says from Chicago why is the USA printing a lot of money why do we pay taxes? <laughs> That's a big question. Um, you got to do some research on the Federal Reserve uh, because uh, it is the Federal Reserve that's doing that. Uh, well, at least until very recently, that was an, a private bank controlled by a private uh, banking families. Why do we pay taxes? So they can steal money from us and make themselves rich, mostly. That, well, that's what the taxes do now. Okay. I Sultan says, do you think an IELTS certificate is important for better business opportunities? I don't know. You know, I'm a native speaker, so I don't know about that. I don't, it, 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 I'm sure it just, depends on each job some if they ask for the IELTS if they require it then I guess you need it but uh, I am guessing a lot of jobs don't ask for it so you have to research that yourself I'm not sure Semi says how about swimming one kilometer a day yeah swimming's great fantastic swimming actually I think is really good for um, uh, you know I've read at least a little bit of uh, some articles about swimming and weight loss that it actually has a it's better than running even because uh, usually you're in kind of cold water or at least cool water and because of that your body's getting cooled right as you swim and then your body has to use more energy to stay warm that burns more calories 
And so therefore, this is one reason like you'll see uh, like really serious swimmers will often have very, very little fat, right? Because they're in that cold water so many hours every day because they're training so much. And some of those people eat huge amounts of food and they're still super, super, super lean, right? Very, very thin. Uh, so swimming's great. Yes, it's an all-around good health exercise for sure. David Mann, it would be great to watch you an interview with you and a British person to see the different in accents. Well, I was interviewed by uh, Luke's, what's it called? Luke's English podcast, I think. Only audio. It's one of his old podcasts. I don't know. You might be able to find it. Check it out. He's British, uh, as you might guess. Um, this is an idiom. What is the, what does this idiom mean? Are you from the horse times? I have no idea. I've never heard that. <laughs> it's not American. I don't think it doesn't sound like an American idiom or it's one. It's a, it's not a common one. I've never, ever, ever heard that. Are you from the horse times? I don't know. I have no idea what that means. Uh, still don't know about the book club yet, Palika. Ah, ah, Sarah, with a good question. Is it okay to weigh yourself every day or once a week? Because if you weigh yourself every day, your weight is up and down. No, I recommend every day, every day, every day. This is what this is. I'm following Cole Robinson here, um, which I will in most things on, in this challenge. Uh, every single day. Yes, you'll see some variations. That's fine. Sometimes some days it might go up and down, right? But, um, but overall, this is why it's important to weigh yourself at exactly the same time every day, right? Like I do morning. I wake up, go to the bathroom, weigh myself. And this, yes, you might see a little variation, but overall, it'll give you a good idea and very good feedback. And especially if you're fasting, you'll see that number dropping fairly quickly. And if it's not, you know, not one day, you don't have to worry if it doesn't drop in one day. But when you're doing fasting, especially, you know, after two days, you should see a drop. After three days, you should see a drop. Then you'll eat and it'll probably go back up again. Sometimes it's the second day it goes back up. Uh, and then, but then it'll start dropping again. And overall, you should see that trend dropping. And it should be, when you're fasting, it should be fairly quickly. Now, if you're eating, if you're trying some other way of losing weight, it'll be more, it'll probably uh, be slower and you won't. The up and down each day might be a little more, but I, I recommend daily, daily, daily. Okay. Um, oh, somebody says, I don't understand the picture challenge with the pictures. How are you going to use on Challenge Runner? I'm not. The picture challenge is on Gab, on our Gab group. Just post your picture right now on Gab. And then at the end, you'll post uh, both side by side. So that's the picture challenge. It's just now and then at the end. That's it. It's not, we're not going to be counting anything or anything, right? It's just the only thing we're counting uh, you know, day to day or week to week is going to be weight, how much you're losing. Adi from Thailand. Hi. Okay, let me jump to the bottom again. Sorry, the questions are coming fast. Uh... Okay, this guy is getting... Don't just keep typing the same one again and again. 
you know, if, if I don't, if I missed your question, I missed your question. Okay. You know, maybe do it once. And then if I miss it, maybe a little bit later, one more time. And that's all. Okay. Don't keep posting it again and again and again. You're filling up the chat with spam. Uh, Sleaza says, I couldn't open the snake diet site. It said private site. What? Snakediet.com. Oh, right. It does say private site. What the hell? If you're the owner or contributor, log in. What happened to snakediet.com? Did he get, did he get, did, some, did they do something to him? Those fuckers. Well, that's really annoying. Let's check him out on YouTube. Make sure he's on YouTube still. Mm-hmm. Snake diet. Yeah, um, well, hopefully he'll do a YouTube video and let us know what's happening with his website. I don't know what happened. I don't know if his host, if he got blocked from these stupid social justice warrior scum or something else, but we'll see. So sorry about that. That sucks. Maybe I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's moving his website to a different host. Or, uh, we'll see. So just get, you just got to watch his videos. <laughs> okay. So it's youtube.com slash snake diet. Okay. So here's an example of someone spamming my comments. Okay. Okay, cool. Leonardo Parigi says, I started reading the Hardy Boys books, which I've recommended. I bump into lots of words I don't know the meaning, but thanks to you, my mind is trained to guess the meanings. Do, I, do you recommend I check every word? No, not really. If you are, if you are understanding the story well, uh, then you can just guess the words and keep going. If you're having trouble understanding what's happening, then maybe you need to use, uh, you know, check the words. That's kind of my guide for that. Andy LeBlanc, can you see something in the British accent, please? Not really. I cannot do a correct British accent. If I did it, if I try to do a British accent, it will sound really, it won't be a real accent. <laughs> just there's, just go on YouTube. There, there are probably thousands and thousands of uh, British people, uh, you know, that you can watch and hear the real accent. Asma says, when will we do another Aesop fable? Okay, I'll do one soon. Sedef says, how can I motivate myself to listen to English every day like I used to? Well, sometimes it's good to take a break and then get yourself motivated, like join our challenge. And while you're losing weight, do something else while you listen. Like go for a walk, jog, combine it with uh, some kind of other activity. That's my recommendation. Olga's asking if, what if I don't want to lose weight, but I want to be in the challenge? Well, just do the body, do the body chain, right? So do the picture before and after, and then uh, you'd be building muscle. If you feel like you're thin enough already, then most people then, once they're thin enough, want to build a little bit of muscle. Now, for a woman, you're not going to try to build a lot of muscle, probably, but maybe just, you know, a little more toned and firm and, and look can look good. Uh, so that's up to you. Desert Fang says, is it effective to join an English class to improve my fluency? 
even if the whole class, including the teachers, are not English speakers or not native English speakers? No. <laughs> In my experience, no, it's not helpful. In my experience, uh, uh, English classes in schools are not helpful. That, let's say, say it's one hour long, that you'll get a bigger benefit by just listening at home for one hour to an audio, uh, even to an audio lesson or reading something or just some real English, you know. Uh, it will be much more effective and useful to you, independent learning at home, using the same time. It's much better. In the class, there's so much wasted time and a bunch of stupid activities that, honestly, I don't recommend doing classes. Even if they're free, I don't recommend them. If, if you have to pay money, then definitely not. Annie LeBlanc says, can you please advise me how can I read the Bhagavad Gita more easily? So I guess you're trying to read it in English. Yeah, it's a little challenging. I understand. Uh, it's very philosophical in some parts. And if you're trying in uh, English, it would be tough. So what I would recommend then, if you're just in really interested in the Gita, uh, would be to find a translation in your own language, in your native language, and read that and study that first. And then maybe you could come back and try the English version if you like. But um, that's what I would recommend. Try, try to find uh, a good translation in your own native language. And then you're not fighting the, you know, struggling with the language also. <laughs> you can just focus on the meaning. Okay. Yeah, here's Juan has heard of Luke's English. It's called Luke's English Podcast. Okay, right. Uh, Adil says, I do running three to four times a week. I feel comfortable. And I take a cold shower after the running. Cold showers and cold baths also ha uh, can have that same uh, effect of helping to do some fat, extra fat burning. Check out the... Check out Wim Hof, H-O-F, and a Cold Therapy. There's some videos and books about these topics. Uh, but it basically helps your metabolism, right? Your body burning energy speeds it up when you're in cold. Anastasia says, what's the average area, I guess the average size of apartments in Japan? Is it a big difference compared to America? Yeah, definitely smaller. Everything in Japan is smaller. The houses are smaller for the same price. Apartments are smaller. Um, everything's smaller. <laughs> but um, there's less land here, available land. And, uh, com you know, the, the, compared to how many people. America is a huge country. And, uh, yeah, it has a lot of people, but still, it's a giant country in terms of size uh, compared to Japan. So, space, everything here is much more limited in size. So, everything tends to be smaller. And kind of the opposite is true. In America, everything tends to be very large. Opiel says, I... Just want to say I appreciate your job. A hug from a Brazilian learner. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. Started teaching my daughter how to read, says Fernando Malau. She's two. Cool. I write a word on the blackboard, ask her for 
to repeat it on the blackboard and ask her to repeat it. She memorized at least five words till now. I write and repeat this once. That's fine. That's great. That's great. That's very similar to what the Dolman method is for teaching, uh, you know, two years old. That great. I'm just getting ready to restart teaching reading to my babies because I tried it at one, uh, like a little, like under one years old. A few months ago, I tried it and uh, they just weren't ready. I don't think they were ready. They, they just weren't, I could see they weren't understanding. They weren't even really understanding spoken language enough. <laughs> but now, like, especially uh, my daughter at a year and three months, she said, I can just tell something's changed and her language ability is jumping very fast. She's like learning words very quickly now. So before I might say something like many, 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 many times and she still not really understand. Now I say something like I could say this is a marker, right? And I could just show her marker, marker, marker. I could maybe say it three, four times, uh, a couple different times and she'll, she'll remember it. Um, so, and then she'll, she might not say it or she might say ma, ma, just something like that. But, uh, but I know she'll, cause I can say, get the marker and she'll walk over and get it. So her language learning has suddenly choom, shot up. So now I think she's ready to get language. And I think this is also a good time for me to try, uh, starting some of the reading again, that she might be ready for that. And then, uh, boy, he's not quite ready for that still, but I'm, he might, he can watch and maybe get some benefit also. It's just quite interesting though, you know, really how we are really biologically, it's quite obvious, we are biologically naturally uh, uh, created to learn language. And babies, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's really hard to explain how suddenly they can learn so fast. I mean, I can't learn it that fast. There's no way if you teach me new words in a, in a foreign language, just like say them two, three times, I, I'll forget it usually, right? I, I need much more repetition. And uh, it's just very impressive that at this, at this certain age for children, how amazingly fast they can acquire, learn a language. It's very, very, it's really neat. It's great. Fantastic. And so that's why if you have the chance, you know, teach your babies and your small children foreign languages because uh, their brain really is in a, in a more open state and it really is far easier for them to pick it up. We know that uh, we can still learn at any, any age, but, uh, but there's definitely something special happening at those very young ages. And he says, do you have any kids? Yes, two, two babies. Okay. Asma says, I'm grateful for my English level. I've noticed that I'm so good compared to another language I'm learning. Yeah, see, right, that's right. <laughs> when you start up a new language, then you realize, oh, my English is actually quite good. This new language, I know nothing. And it's very frustrating. Ah, oh, man, my English is great. It's nice. It's good. Good for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Couple more. Yeah, Sarah says my, my the metabolism of my body is slow, so I, I lose weight slowly. Uh, you know, uh, Cole Robinson just did a, his newest snake diet video. is about this topic. And basically, he advises you to don't sit during the day at all to basically be active and moving even if you're just standing the entire day and also fast at the same time and just to just anyway watch the video to try to increase your metabolism metabolism again is is the inner is the system of your body burning energy your energy burning 
system in your body. And we'll say a fast metabolism means you burn a lot of energy quickly, meaning you burn calories and meaning you'll lose weight easily, right? Typically younger people we think have fast metabolisms. And then slow metabolism means your body burns energy slowly, meaning you'll burn fat more slowly, you lose weight more slowly. Tried to read. Richard says, I tried to read The Art of War at the time, but I found it weird English vocabulary. Do you know something about Yeah, I've read it. Uh, so it depends on the translation. It originally, obviously, was originally in Chinese. So it just depends how good the translation will be. The other issue is that the topic is kind of philosophical, and it's about war, military uh, philosophy, I guess is what you might say, military strategy. So if you're not familiar with those kind of topics, right, it might be some new vocab, which makes it extra difficult. You could try a different translation or maybe just wait and come back to it if it's really tough. But that's, that's you know, sometimes when you go into an area, a, a topic that's not normal for you, then it can be more difficult because there's a lot of new vocab used in different ways. But it's a good book. It's really, it's a classic, obviously. Very, very old. Leonardo Parigi says, Why do schools not want to teach English properly? I have two ideas. Teachers are lazy. Yes. Two, for the government, the states in general, it's simpler to keep people under control if they're ignorant. They're both correct. <laughs> it's one and two. <laughs> both. You're right, Leonardo. Yeah, like Vladislav says, some philosophical books can be difficult even in your native language. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I, um, and again, it also depends on the translation. Some translations might be the same book. One translation is very hard to understand and the other is easier. Uh, like I tried a translation of Aristotle, I don't know, was it a year ago, and uh, I was like, oh my God, it was so hard to get through, to read through it. Uh, and then, you know, I found another one that's, that was much more clear and easy to read. So sometimes it's the translation. Marty asks, do I want to travel? Well, I've traveled, all, and if yes, where do you want to go? Uh, right now, I'm not really interested in doing much traveling. I would like to go on vacation somewhere nice and tropical, like a beach. So I'd like to just take a family vacation with, uh, so, you know, someplace like Hawaii, Guam, Thailand. Other than that, I'm not, uh, in the, probably in the next couple of years, not going to be traveling much while the babies are very small. Uh, when they get older and we start doing homeschooling, I would like to take some educational trips. So take them to different places and study the history and culture of those places and actually visit. Like I would love to do Greece and Rome, especially Greece and Italy, I should say. And of course, we'll travel around Japan too. <laughs> well, you guys are asking me some questions. I have no idea. Uh, Anna LeBlanc, what are black holes in your opinion? I don't know. I don't even know if they're real. It's an astronomy and it's way outside of my uh, expertise, so I don't know. Zubar says, if I go to Britain, should I know the British accent? You probably should be familiar with it. Just listen to some videos or podcasts in, in British English, so you get used to the accent. It's not that big a deal. Uh, if your English is already good, if you uh, understand me fairly well, then it will not be difficult for you to pick up the British accent a little bit. You don't have to use it, you, but understanding it, yes, would be a good idea. Just get just so you're comfortable with it.
Internet says, did you have a yo-yo effect after fasting? I did not. I did not. Uh, my, uh, quote, yo-yo, the reason I regained weight recently was because of uh, sleep, lack of sleep. And that's how I gained the weight last year before I fasted. It was the same problem. <laughs> we first got, uh, you know, it, it was just, it was, it was rough. <laughs> First get home and you've got new babies and they're awake every two hours and, and then twins. So it's like every hour, <clears throat> it was very stressful and tough plus health issues and things with one of the babies. And uh, anyway, basically just got no sleep. So I gained a huge amount of weight last year. Then I fasted and lost it. But then more recently, my sleep has been messed up. So I gain weight when I have bad sleep, it stresses me out and I tend to gain weight. Cool. Jeremy Les says, I started decreasing sugar, fat, and increasing walking time a few days ago. It seems it's slowly working. My clothes are a little bit looser. Yay. Nice. See, just little small changes. So you can also do that. Cool. Marjan says, the new challenge is way outside of my comfort zone. That's precisely why I'm going to do it. I'll post my before picture soon. Excellent. Good. Yep. I posted mine already. You guys saw it. Not great. A lot of stuff says, uh, some of my friends are crazy about COVID. They tell me they know people personally with COVID. Did they died? It's a flu. Look at the numbers. It's no worse than a regular flu. Unless they're over 80, they're fine. It's just a bad flu. Will they lie to defend their opinion? Of course they will. They'll lie. They'll exaggerate because people, this is a hysteria we are in right now. You know, if people want to be afraid, let them be afraid. If people want to believe all the media, you know, it's just one. You, if, 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 you, if they can't wake up now, they're not going to wake up. If they don't wake up from the obvious lies about the rioting and the, the virus and, uh, oh, we can't go out. We can't go to a restaurant because of the virus was going to kill everybody. Oh, but it's okay to go to to riots and protests with huge numbers of people. That's okay. That's safe somehow, but it's not safe to go to the job or go see a sporting event. It's all, it's, it's such an obvious lie. How, how, if, if people are too stupid to see the lies or too afraid or too zombie or blue pill, whatever word you want to use, they're, you're not going to wake them up. You will not do it. There's nothing you can say. There's no amount of logic or reason or even emotion you can use to change their mind. They are programmed by the TV and that's it. They're zombies. It's just like the movie The Matrix. <laughs> Morpheus tells Neo, you know, uh, most people are not ready to wake up. They're not ready to be unplugged. So you have to just... Don't worry about them. And they can even be, be our enemies inside the matrix. Um, you have to accept it. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. People say they know personally people who died of COVID. Again, do you know anybody who died of COVID? Someone says, you know, again, people lie. They, they People lie all the time because to try to, oh, no, I know somebody. It's like, do you know anybody, though? And if you don't know anybody, why is that, right? Do you personally know someone who died? Not us two, you know, oh, I know somebody who knows somebody. No, no, and that's all bullshit. I don't care if someone says, oh, I know somebody. It's like, well, I don't. I know nobody. And uh, again, the second thing is people die and they call it the virus, but it's actually something else. You know, do the research, look into it. So they have they have diabetes. They're eight, they're 85 years old. They have a they had a stroke. Oh, and then they get the flu and they die. Oh, it's because the flu killed them. No, no. Being 80 and old and with diabetes uh, is what killed them. I mean, this happens with the normal flu. It happens with just a regular flu. It happens all the time. Right? It's like saying, I know somebody who died of the flu. Well, yeah, okay, of course. Because people who are really sick and have problems, they also die of the flu or they die of pneumonia. 
So if someone says, yeah, I know somebody who died of this, it's like, well, so what? So what? It's like saying, I know somebody who died of pneumonia. Yeah, so what? People die of pneumonia. Yes, it happens because they're weak and they have some pro and other health problems. People die of the flu. I don't know. It's like 80, 100,000 a year in America die of the normal flu. So, so what? This is, it's no, the point is, it's no worse than normal flu or maybe slightly worse. That's the point. It's not some deadly super virus that's killing everybody. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's a lie. It's a media lie. If they want to be afraid, let them be afraid. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care. Susanna says, I know nobody with the COVID virus. Exactly. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> And even if I did, I wouldn't care. Like I saw, there was this, uh, there was this other one uh, recently in the news. It was this like really fat, super fat black kid. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was, uh, he looked young, right? And so the headline is, you know, healthy young man dies of virus, of COVID virus. And they showed this picture of the guy. And then you find out, oh, except he was diabetic, and he had all these other health problems and he was super, super, super overweight. So the guy was super unhealthy. He was just waiting to die of something. <laughs> so, but it doesn't matter. They're going to, they're going to lie and spin it. It's, it's sickening. Adil says, do you think the virus will be back more dangerous than before? Oh, the media is going to bring it back and try to make this. Yes, that's exactly what they're going to do. I don't know, probably just before the election. You know, just as the election in America is getting closer, they'll say, oh, it's coming back again. Oh, and they're going to try the same thing again. Will you believe it this time? I hope not. Hopefully next time they try it, you'll just laugh and and ignore it. Lily Trump girl says COVID, the virus is a tool for gaining control. Yep. Is watermelon good for losing weight? Asked Sarah. I'm not sure. It's pretty low calorie, I think. Good for hydration. It's a good food. Ken says, your topic, hero versus victim, saved my friend's career and even his life. Thank you very much, AJ. Wow. Well, that's nice. Good. Good for him. Good, good, good. Or for her. Oh, his life. Good for him. All right, a couple more. All right, a couple more, and then it's time to go... Yeah, like Albert Amani says, uh, I talked with a nurse yesterday and how wearing a mask is serious. It actually causes breathing problems and oxygen def de uh, lowers the oxygen in the brain, oxygen deficiency in the brain. Right. I have not and I will not wear one. Vladislav says people just don't wake up from the matrix. Most will not. Never. Most will never wake up. Just accept it. They won't. Okay, I think that's about it, guys. All right. Last one, I guess I'll check, pick one more and then we're done. Um. 
Okay, what English teaching books would you recommend? I'll finish with that one. And it's always the same one that I recommend, and it's uh, teaching... It's TPRS <laughs> by Blaine Ray. I can't remember what it stands for. Um, TPR, TPR Storytelling. It's in, that's the title of the book. TPR Storytelling by Blaine Ray. TPR Storytelling by Blaine Ray. All right, lots of love to you all. I will see you next time. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Uh, get on Gab. That's my, my only social media now. Gab.com, G-A-B.com, slash A-J-Hogue. See you next time. Bye for now.